It's day four at Charles Darwin Grammar and time for Matron's morning inspection. Oh dear, it's not good, is it? With over 20 years' experience as a boarding school matron, she's a stickler for an impeccably made bed. Himalayas, don't bite. A sloppy appearance may be acceptable at their modern schools, but not here. Oh, I can't reach up there. Matron always has a pair of braces on hand in case of a drop in standards in the boys' dorm. Oh, please. What's this? Boxes. What a thing. Oh! oh. 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 Absolutely oh. perfect. Yeah. Now, put your blazer on, you'll see how nice you look. Oh, no way. No way. Matron might be satisfied, but housemaster Mr Williams is on the warpath. I'm going to make you a once-only offer. I am willing to offer you all a contraband amnesty. If you fail to offer up contraband now, when the amnesty is offered, and I subsequently find any contraband, the punishment will be severe. The boys all keep stum. Apart from one, James Ingram. Handing over his hidden stash might sweeten up the teachers. Oh boy. But it doesn't seem to impress his dorm mates. Every day at Charles Darwin School begins with a traditional morning assembly. Today, staff are going to be consulting on the position of head boy and head girl. Those positions carry with them responsibility and privileges. We are looking for leaders. A leader for the girls and a leader for the boys. Since the start of term, the teachers have been assessing the pupils for old-fashioned qualities of integrity and authority. James Ingram is convinced he's a front-runner for head boy. The headmaster keeps going on about how I'd be such a good head boy kind of thing. Um, and how he's still making up his mind. I think head boy will probably be Ingram because he's a real suck up to all teachers. He really, he'll do anything that it takes. We reckon that Ingram's probably going to get it. Yeah, even though he don't want him to. Yeah, but he's still going to get it. He just sucks up. He just, he's just sucking up way too much. He tries too hard. It's time for lessons. This morning, the pupils are facing a double period of physics. Charles Darwin Grammar is fitted out with a fully functioning 1950s science lab where the emphasis will be on practical learning through dramatic experiments. It's a far cry from modern GCSE combined science. In the 1950s, science was taught as three separate subjects, chemistry, physics and biology. Pupils were expected to know the basics no matter how dull. In physics, for instance, understanding how light is refracted through a lens was considered essential. Oh, the fact that it used to be alive. There's blood everywhere. Okay. I just don't, I really, really don't like that kind of thing. It just, I just think an animal's eye should be on an animal. And it's just, I don't like it when it's all chopped out. For Jenny Ritzman, the thought of cutting up animals is a little too close to home. With my mum, dad, and brother, and two little boys. My guinea pigs are called Toffee and Galaxy, and they're both five. Oh, her boys. Yeah, she loves she's the so... guinea pigs. <laughs> she, she acts like they're babies. Yeah. 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 <gasps> oh, look at that. I'm their mum, and so my mum is their grandma, and my, my dad's their granddad, and my brother's their uncle. Yeah, we have this whole family thing. If I'm not there to look after them, then my parents will look after them, but they haven't quite got the knack like I have. You know, they don't know our routine. She doesn't think we're going to look after them as well as she does. That's her biggest concern. Quite sad, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm a vegetarian is just, I don't... It's like someone give you a dead body and say, here, eat this. Would you really want to eat that? She really does feel that animals have their own personalities and, mm, I mean, Jenny would say, you're eating someone. Would you really want to eat an animal? It's dead. 
Jennifer, come over here. Jenny's predicted a B grade in GCSE science. Remember, every time in life you're faced with a challenge, if you react this way, you will achieve nothing. You will achieve nothing if this is the way you react to every challenge in your life. Go back to your places. If the girls continue like this, the boys will easily outstrip them in the upcoming science O-levels. Pay attention! It's lunchtime at Charles Darwin Grammar, and for these kids, used to turkey twizzlers and microwave pizza, every meal is a challenge. Much more nutritious than modern school dinners, on the menu, meat stew and boiled vegetables. It looks like it's just come out of a science experiment. Are you an idiot? Do you think that's going to help someone eat their food by saying it looks like bread? Is there anybody who would like seconds of braised lamb's heart? What's wrong with that? Right. It just tastes like lamb. The 1950s, I would have happily lived in it food-wise. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's really horrible, disgusting. Whilst the boys see the funny side, the girls get on a right old state. <laughs> Ashley Waters is a shadow of her former self. My teachers would describe me as loud, I say what I think, and I don't always follow the rules. I think she can get easily bored and she becomes quite disruptive at school. Mm. Yeah, I set off five fire alarms, and I caused a fire as well. <laughs> oh, and we threw eggs at all the teachers as well. That's bad, isn't it? At her prom as well, she wasn't the best behaved kid there. I did a strip and a dirty dance with my headmaster while he was trying to give a speech. Now I'm not allowed back in the school premises. Did, Did you not know? <laughs> and I'll definitely miss my makeup. I don't know how I'm going to cope without that. She'll probably strop about the way that they're going to make her do her hair. Hair straighteners, I can't live without hair straighteners. She won't like any of that, but it'd be brilliant to see her going through it. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley and the other girls have a whole afternoon of sport to look forward to, but they seem to be more interested in doing their hair. Many modern girls are too image conscious to break into a sweat, let alone spend two hours on the sports field. I'm just lazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm just lazy. Yeah. I'm not, like, I don't exercise. Don't need to run in and I don't like running either. either. I don't usually run. I prefer to either walk or be driven, because I don't get the point in running when you just get absolutely exhausted and you look like a complete idiot. So I hate that sort of thing. I haven't done PE for five years. I actually don't own a PE kit for my school. <laughs> I just haven't done it. I don't do it and I don't have to. I just sit there and read instead. I can't handle it. And that may mean I'm weak. <laughs> And that may mean now I'm not a strong person, but I really don't care at the moment because I want to go home. For Ashley and her friend Holly, the prospect of PE is the final straw. Now, what's wrong with you? I've just, I've hated everything. I hate the lessons. I hate the constant strictness. I, I, I thought it was going to be like this, but I didn't realise to what extent how harsh everyone was going to be. Once you're there, you don't realise actually how bad it is, and it is well bad. Like, seriously bad, and, and I, I can't handle that. I think that if I stay for another week, I'm going to want to go then. So I might have <laughs> just go now. What's the point of putting myself through it for more time? Well, I can almost promise you that if you stayed for another week, you wouldn't want to go. I've been doing this job for a long time, and I can tell you now that in a week's time, you will say to me, I am so glad that I didn't go. And just explain to me in finer detail what has gone wrong. I've hardly eaten anything. Like, I can't actually stomach the food. So when I do PE, I'm just getting dizzy and weak, and I physically feel like I'm just drained already. And I think if I stay here for the month, I would just become so insecure because already I'm so conscious of how I look and, like, everything. And I just don't think it's worth putting myself through that. And, you know, I was going to talk to people about the food problem, but then I knew I'd probably be forced to eat it, and I can't because you've seen my heave when I look at the food, and I can't stay here when I'm not eating. It's just, it's not, it's not good for me. Can I just say that eating isn't the word, eating, it's got a G on the end. Now, you have to listen to me when I'm talking to you. If you go, you will regret it hugely. And people will say, if they knew you were going through this and you were giving up, 
Well, how can they give up on that? What happens when they go out into the workplace? If it doesn't go right for the first week, are they going to chuck it in? I don't think so. This is real character building stuff. And if you get through this, you can face anything on this earth. If you don't, you're just a waste of space. Because it's four weeks till the end of term. And it's the four weeks that'll make such a huge difference to your life. It, re it really will. And I think you would be absolute fools to let this opportunity go. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, I understand what you're saying, Richard. Now, I think you ought to go back to games now. A good dose of netball should sort out these reluctant athletes. <laughs> Shoot, Meng! Go on, Amy, Amy, Martha. Amy, try and look at the ball. In modern schools, kids rarely have more than two hours of PE a week. In the 1950s, compulsory competitive sport was seen as character building. Come on, push! In 21st century schools, the emphasis is on cooperation, not competition. But at Charles Darwin, the school mottos, only the fittest survive. <laughs> These weaklings wouldn't have lasted five minutes up against the lads of the 50s. Woo, come on, everybody. Grammar schools in the 50s prided themselves on their sporting achievements, with unfit pupils treated as failures. School children would spend up to 17 hours a week working off those spam fritters, the same amount of time today's kids spend watching TV. Chubby kids were rare in the 50s, but today, one in five British teenagers is obese. For Molly Coddle 21st century teenagers, being made to do a 60 yard run just isn't fair. <laughs> and it's not just the fat kids who object. Amy Jumper Nyung decides to protest. Right, you will continue all the way around the field. And can you do scouts, please? 50 runs and 50 walks, do it now. I Go. can't actually run this. Well, you do as much as you can. Come on, it's get on with it. I can't run, I've got stomach cramps. Well, then you run. do as much as you can. Quickly, hurry up. Can you understand? I can't run. I understand perfectly well. Will you please start moving? I don't mind if you move your hands on your feet, on your hands and feet, or backwards, sideways, <laughs> jumping like a kangaroo. You move. <laughs> Nicknamed Limpy by her classmates, Amy has a particular hatred of physical exertion. I'm just not running. It's bloody mental. The making us doing it five days of the week. I'm so exhausted. I just feel sick because I've never done that much exercise in my whole life. <laughs> when I'm at home, I just sit about, lounge around, talk on the phone, or occasionally I go out, but it's not really far. Or I take a bus or something, but this is just ridiculous. I'm just, I'm so. I'm mentally exhausted, I'm physically exhausted at the same time. You just don't ever get time alone, it's just, oh... I think it's really getting to me. I'm just going to walk back and sit down, but I'm, I'm not running. Looks like 1950s grit is not Limpy's forte. I don't think I've done games for the better half of a year. I've just written myself sick notes because I just... I can't, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> I'm definitely not an organised person. I always forget when to turn up for things, or I turn up for the wrong day or the wrong time. I'm actually late for everything. With strict teachers, I'm not very good, actually, and I usually just end up getting sent out of the room. Malingara Amy's in for it now. She's been sent to see Matron. But while the girls lack competitive spirit, the boys are getting a taste for it. We do do a lot of running, so I'm quite used to the sprinting, running aspect of it. I, do, I used, did used to do a lot of running, but that's, that's really, really mental compared to what we usually do. That was really enjoyable, really fun. And she wanted to win so much. She didn't want to go back and lose her. I never do this much exercise, especially uh, at home let, in a week, let alone a day. So it's been quite a challenge for me, and it really hurts. Amy's punishment for shirking in P.E. is to scrub the boys' dirty shirts. Number one. Carry on. I think in a sense it 
doing punishments like this actually make you learn your lesson because in normal schools you just do punishments that are just really they only last about 10 or 5 minutes and then more often than not it's just usually teachers just telling you off and just asking you not to do it again but here it's I think if you do punishments you actually do learn your lesson and you just don't do it again really At Charles Darwin Grammar School, the pupils follow a rigid timetable. Pages 99 to 102. Even after lessons, they have prep, an hour and 15 minutes of supervised homework. It's a frustrating experience for kids used to planning their own evenings. After prep, they're treated to half an hour of free time. It's the only chance the boys and girls get to spend time together. Under the beady eye of Miss Gibson, of course. Boys, you have literally a few more moments. I suggest you use those few more moments to get this place looking ship shape. <laughs> but the kids are reverting to type. And Miss Gibson's getting increasingly frustrated with their slack 21st century attitude. Modern teenagers are only good at making a mess, not cleaning one up. Why are you playing, boy? What's that under that chair? It's a book. This room does not look done to me. I just took that off you about a minute ago. Is there something funny? I'm not laughing. So, excuse me. Try that one again. I'm not laughing at this. Is there something you want to say? Not really, no. How dare you speak to a member of staff like that? Not really, no. <sighs> Get out, son. I really am at a loss as to what to do with you. You spoil it for everybody. A few selfish people who are not prepared to pitch in and help. Spoil it for everybody. Get outside, line up, silently, cats on. After only four days at the school, the relentless regime is starting to get to the kids. They're fed up with being treated like children who should be seen but not heard. I just feel like my companions being suppressed and that you're going to be broken down into this yes sir, like mechanical robot, everything yes sir, no sir, very good sir. Like, you can't say nothing off, you can't say yeah, okay, it's just... It's just set, you're being turned into a machine that's just polite, rigid and boring. The one thing about this place is that it completely quashes your individuality, the way the way you can be a person yourself. You just can't be in here because you've all got to be exactly the same and perfect. It's like they're cloning everyone to be the same and I don't think that's very good. I think everyone should be like individuals how they are. I can't actually show who I really am here because we're all being the same, which just isn't fun. We're all forced to be this, well, attempted to force to be this samey, intelligent little swat who just does everything that the teacher wants. I'm not like that, I'm an individual. <laughs> These modern kids may prize their individuality, but they seem to be enjoying communal dorm life. They've even written their own version of the school song. Yes, you know! <laughs> Into your beds, please. In case you have forgotten, my office and my quarters where I sleep are directly next to yours. I hear everything that goes on in this dorm. There'll be no reading tonight. And when lights go out, I want absolute silence. Yes, 
Singing after lights out is strictly forbidden. Line up. Mr. Williams thinks 20 minutes of fresh air might teach them a lesson. Wannabe head boy James Ingram decides to assert his individuality. Ingram, are you ready to go to bed with no talking? I'm sure everyone else would like to stand here, but I'd rather go for a jog, sir. Now, not in the morning, sir. He's broken the habit of a lifetime and back-chatted a teacher. Did you see what he did? You have earned your first detention from me for that insolent remark. I don't know if you thought you were trying to be funny, no, sir. I think you can tell I am not amused. After last night's misbehavior, the boys are still half asleep. Come on, up. And in the cold light of day, James Ingram's lost his bottle. I'm thinking of asking the head teacher to allow me to go home, because I'm really not happy here. Um, I'm just not enjoying it. But he's not the only one in trouble. Last night, at about 20 past 11, I was just dropping off to sleep, and I heard a, a running footsteps. The two girls got out of their French windows at the, in the dormitory end and had run across the parapet past my bedroom windows to get to the boys' dormitory. Two girls went out of these windows. They were seen running along the parapet and running back again. I'm referring that to the headmaster. Whoever was responsible, just hold yourselves in readiness. I went out first, and I went underneath the matron's window, past Mr. Stanley's window, and then I came to the boys' dormitory, and I was, like, tapping on, tapping, and they, they told me to go away because Mr. Stanley was in the room. And we, like, tried three times, and we got, we got caught, like, on the third time, and, um by one of the teachers, but they didn't actually see us because it was too dark. They knew it was two girls. And now Matron's going around saying um, that if they don't, if the two people don't admit to it, then the whole dorm is going to be punished. But to be honest, I don't exactly want to be expelled. So I'm really, I'm actually a bit scared about that. Although the culprits weren't identified, persistent troublemaker and vicar's daughter, Vicky Buxton, is a prime suspect. Victoria, I want you to tell me the truth now. Please tell me that you had nothing to do with running along the veranda last night. I had nothing to do with that, Matron. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. Right. Can I suggest to you this evening that you get the girls to own up, whoever it was? We're trying as hard as we can, Matron. We are trying. Because it's going to be very hard for the rest of them. Okay. And it's unfair to make people be punished for things they haven't done. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Meanwhile, Ingram has been sent to see the head after last night's trouble. I understand, Ingram, from what the housemaster tells me, you wish to challenge the authority of the running of my school. Explain yourself to me, Ingram! Sir, I had an irrational moment. I would like to leave the school. That's why I have the irrational moment. You had an irrational moment. That is your excuse. Ingram, if you continue to behave in such a manner, it will be not your choice to leave this school. It will be my choice. So do not preempt me. Could you tell me exactly what you said to the housemaster? That I would like to go for a jog when everyone else wouldn't. And I'd like to go for a night home jog. You think that, do you think that's clever? No, sir, I was being honest. Oh, do you want to play a game of cleverness, Ingram? Because if we do, Ingram, I shall beat you hands down. My opinion of you couldn't have been higher prior to this incident. Couldn't have been higher. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You've stepped out of line, and now the strong thing to do is to not wallow in self-pity, Ingram, but to go to the housemaster at the earliest convenience and apologise. That's the least you can do. Yes, sir. Dismiss. Yes. Well, Ingram is upset, basically, because Ingram feels he's let himself down. He feels embarrassed 
Um, he's acted stupidly, and now he's getting a telling off. A lot of it's sort of self-centred, um, hence his comment, um, I, I'm saying silly things at times simply because I want to go home. You see, the immediate reaction from many children today is, if they're caught out and they're reprimanded, they try and bring the whole situation back to themselves, that, if th that they actually are the offended against party. Um, that, that people need to feel sorry for them. The fact that Ingram's sort of blubbing is water for ducks back to me. The fact is, Ingram uh, chose to be rude to the housemaster, and if Ingram is now unhappy about the whole situation, then I'm pleased he's unhappy. Then he may learn something from it. It's certainly not like James to be upset during science. Science has been integral to my life since I was very small. My mum used to be the head of biology at a high school. James really enjoys science right from the word go. She'd be looking in the paper, she'd find something interesting. And even though I was about ten, she'd just make me read it, make me understand it, and that would become part of me. He's learning all the time and quite prepared to share his knowledge with anybody he can speak to. <laughs> when I went into year seven, I knew most of the syllabus already. So I just coasted through. I managed to get 100% on one of my tests. Yes, people think I'm a science geek. Um, I am a nerd, and I'm proud of it. Ingram, take your hand away. You don't need to hold your head up. You have muscles in your neck that will do that for you. I know we're going to have a better lesson than we did yesterday. Yes, miss. Appalled by the pupils' work so far, English teacher Miss Gibson is going to take them back to basics. I'm going to test you on the technical accuracy of your writing. And we're going to do that by undertaking a dictation. A dictation is where I read and you write. In modern schools, the emphasis is on communication and self-expression with pupils assessed through essay writing and coursework. But in the 1950s, it was all about spelling, punctuation and grammar. Are you feeling confident, Jefford? Not really, but I'll keep going in. Fortitude. Do you want to spell fortitude? No, I don't want you to spell oh. fortitude. I'm telling you to have fortitude, silly oh, okay. boy. <laughs> punctuation is Yes. Right. The bachelor reflected on his one rule in life in GCSE English, students can get the top grades even if their spelling's not up to scratch. Bachelor was spelled incorrectly. Bachelor. Yeah, can't spell it. Have another go. Sebastian Jefford is predicted a B grade for GCSE English. I can't spell it, mate. I don't know how to spell Try it. Try until you can. Yeah, I'm just going to spell it the same way every time. Traditionally, Girls are much better at English than boys. So how good's their spelling? No batch. There's no T in it. Batch L O. So pretty much every letter was wrong there. Guinea pig lover Jenny Ritzman is predicted an A at GCSE. It doesn't have a T in it, Jenny. Batch L O. Jenny's other mistake is a little subtler. Any ideas? No. Ruby Lally is also predicted an A grade for GCSE. Do it large underneath. Sit down, Ruby. Does anybody know how to spell subtler? Sit down, Jenny. Clever clogged Sam Wyville is predicted an A star. It's the end of the first week of term, and the headmaster's called a special assembly. Right, sit down, please. 
I am absolutely delighted to announce uh, that the two pupils who have the honour and the good fortune to be appointed head girl and head boy of this prestigious school, I've decided that head girl will be Victoria. So if you'd like to come out, please. Come out, please. Vicky might seem a surprising choice. She's been in constant trouble since day one. Don't you dare wolf whistle in my class, Victoria Buxton! <laughs> so would you go and stand and face the wall as you were meant to do? Over there, please, and face the wall. In the 1950s, teachers often made troublemakers prefects in the hope that responsibility would turn them into reformed characters. Vicky's selection gives James Ingram hope. I've decided that the head boy for this term will be Hudson. Yeah. But not for long. Well done, Hudson. Very good. Good luck. Have a good term. Okay. It was between me and Ingram at the beginning, but when he decided to go on his random run around the car park, it, was, it kind of knocked back his chances of becoming head boy a bit, so I'm quite happy and I'll be quite glad to see what kind of privileges they give me, like extra pudding or something. But something's preying on the new head girl's mind. I, I don't really know what to say, to be honest, because I, I didn't expect it at all. I mean, I've always said, oh, it's good because I know that I'm not going to get head girl, so therefore I can, I can cause a bit of trouble. Whereas, I can't now. So, I, I'm just really confused at the moment, to be honest. But, um, yeah. Feeling guilty, the vicar's daughter has confessed to her part in last night's dorm raid. Well, I thought that I'd rather I'd admit it now than... But I specifically and I'll take asked responsibility you. For no, but I specifically asked you. I know you did, Matron. I called you in and said to you, please tell me. Because I didn't want to get anyone else in trouble. No, no, you wanted what you've got. And that makes me more unhappy, is the fact it was, you know, one of my recommendations that you were head girl because you turned yourself round. I know, and that's the thing. That's why I said <coughs> I'd rather say it now because I would rather not. I mean, if I, if I was to get found, if I was to admit it later on, then I'm more likely to. I mean, I'm probably Would losing, you you've told losing me another my badge line. now. You've just told me another lie as well, haven't you? Saying that it was just you when two girls were seen. But I know I haven't said. I was saying that I will take full responsibility. No, 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 no. There's two of you. And the only chance you've got of redeeming yourself is to tell us who the other one is. Had you gone into the boys' dormitory, you would be going, both of you. Had you gone into that dormitory, without a shadow of a doubt, you'd have been out of the school. I feel it prudent that you should be punished, and then we will wipe the slate clean. This particular incident happened before I appointed you as head girl. My faith in you as a head girl remains because I do not believe you will repeat such uh, error of judgment. My decision is that at 3.30 today, you will be sent to a part of this school, will clean, and you will carry on cleaning till I am satisfied that that particular job is done. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The girl's punishment is to clean the terrace they were caught sneaking along. I want you to sweep it, You'll clear it all up, and then I want you to <clears throat> completely scrub the steps. OK, so it's just this bit here, this oh, section. No, 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 this is for now. Then I want the next section done. OK, Rachel. And if I find you talking to anyone or anyone is interfering, then we'll do it all again tomorrow. Yes, Matron.
For Ashley, scrubbing the floor on her hands and knees is well bad. For Vicky, still being head girl is even worse. I think it's shit. I don't feel like I'm allowed to be myself in here anymore. I was allowed to be myself for the first three days, and so what, I got six attentions, but at least I was having fun doing it, at least I could laugh at it. Whereas now, I'm doing a punishment as well as being head girl, and I know that I'm head girl for the next three weeks. And so it's not even funny, because I can't be myself. I'm like now restricted to being head girl, not Vicky. Well, it it's looks not the darn sight better. The detergents made it go a bit, um, make it like a white deposit. But I think that, that brings out the blue a lot better. Very mucky. Mm. Definitely improved. If the job's worth doing. Mm. I think Vicky has had a couple of hiccups, but I think she was a good choice as head girl. I think every task that she's given, she gives 110%. And I'm very pleased with her so far. Um, I think she was a very good choice. And I think she'll only improve. I think she's got a very good influence over the girls. And, uh, and I think they aspire to be like her, really. Silence! It's Sunday morning. The kids have had a lion and a traditional English breakfast. And now it's the time they've been looking forward to all week. Letters from home. I usually just ring people or text them or email them or talk to them over the internet. I don't think I've ever written letters. I think it's um, a nicer way than um, like texting or ringing someone because you can make it more personal and you can write everything you want. It should be good to hear what's going on back home. Um, I gave most of my friends the address, so I should have at least a couple. You sit on your own bed. Oh, no way. Oh, no way. OK. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Philip Donald. It's yours. Thank you, sir. And one, two, three. Oh, you're obviously a mummy's boy. Uh, Hugh Gilroy. <laughs> Are you a mummy's boy? No, sir, I'm not. Looks like it. <laughs> I don't think they're from my mum, so I'll thank you very much. You're either that or you're a stud. <laughs> Five letters for James Ingram. Oh, my God. Thanks, sir. And the last letter goes to Razak. It's a disappointing morning for many of the boys. Oh, I didn't get nothing. That's amazing. That's out of order. My mum's smack. I knew. My mum's so my lazy, mom man. To me, for not one of them to write to me. You know, all my best friends have got loads and loads of mates, and you know, they all promised they'd write. And for not one of them to write, I've got to wait another week now. I was so looking forward to today to get these letters. Um, it's really, really blew my mind out there. I just want to go. I just want to go and phone them to get the Really gutted. The girls aren't even trying to be stiff upper lipped. <laughs> I haven't thought about it at all, and then to see the actual handwriting of my mum and telling me about what she was doing on, the, on in the sermon and what, and what my sister did that day and what they heard for tea and things and just things like that. And you don't really think about it at all until until it's actually written down on paper and you can see your mum's handwriting or your grandma's handwriting. It's good, and these guys crushing And it's even worse for those that don't get any letters. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> After reading their letters, it's off to the classrooms to write their replies. It's the first time many of these kids have ever written a letter home, and it brings out unexpected emotions. I do miss them, but I never actually thought I'd miss them this much. Because I missed them like, on the first day that I actually came here, and that really surprised me, because I couldn't wait to get away from home just like before, but now I just... I wish I'd really savoured the last moments of when they were all around. 
I actually just told them that I was really sorry for everything I've done and being a really bad daughter, which I have been. I think when I go back, I'll just respect them a lot more. I'll help around the house, <laughs> which is really, it sounds unlikely, but I actually will. And, um, I don't know, I just, I think I'll be a really changed person when I come out, although it sounds tacky, but I think I will. They've only been at the school a week, but already the boys are realising that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Coming here for the first few days has just made me realise how important family is, how devoted you have to be to them, how loving you have to be with them. Already I'm appreciating everything more. I appreciate my mum more, what she does for me. I just appreciate what everyone does for me. I'm just, I'm even, yeah, I'm even missing my sister. That's, that's saying something. It's been a roller coaster ride for the girls, but they too are starting to change. I really do feel like I'm changing. I don't, I don't actually feel like me. I feel a lot more grown up, and that's just after a week. So I just think in three weeks, I'm going to be like really grown up, <laughs> which, which is kind of good. I'm doing it to prove to myself that I went through that 1950s experience, and I'm going to come out a better person, even though I thought it's going to be better. Part of me just wants to go home and just put right everything I've done wrong. I, I do just want to make them proud now. I just, I want to actually pass the O-levels and just make them proud. Stop fidgeting! Next week... We're going to have <laughs> the girls confront practical biology... Come there, now! Get out! You stupid little boy! The boys are testing the limits and the head girl's in big trouble. You have manacled my hands. You have left me with no alternative. <laughs>